last year, in September, I visited the Dadaab refugee settlement, which is at the border to Somalia, where lots of people from Somalia are fleeing to. It's a very desperate setting there, and if you talk to people, their reality is really desperate. What they told me is they, in the first place, had to flee because of a combination of the ongoing conflicts in Somalia, but also because of climate change. We are seeing an ongoing drought in Somalia, which has undermined their livelihoods. They lost their agricultural assets, they lost their, their livestock, and they just didn't have any more opportunities to adopt or to stay, while they are also impacted by the ongoing insecurity. So they fled because they were scared for their lives. They took their kids. I spoke to a woman who was over 80 years old and was walking towards the Dab for more than 20 days with her grandchild at, with her hand, which is just devastating to see. Now they're living in this reality where there's very little limited support, very limited adaptation. So she was telling me about the living conditions, living in a tent made of plastic sheeting when there's temperatures of over 40 degrees in the day and it's getting super cold in the night. There's not enough access to resources like water or food in the camp. And her child couldn't or her grandchild couldn't go to school because the walking distance was too long and because they had to collect firewood or they had to collect water during the day. What we're seeing now is that after being impacted by the severe drought, the camp was flooded. So after already being exposed to extreme heat, to dry, to dry conditions, now a lot of people in the camp have lost their shelter and have lost their limited assets because of the flood and had to flee again. So with this reality in mind, at this COP, what we really have to do is listen to these people. We can't just look away. We have to make them front and center in all sorts of decision making because they have contributed the least to the climate crisis. They are not the ones that are producing emissions, but they are the ones that have the least assets to cope with its uh, consequences already now and increasingly so in the future. So let's listen to them. Let's support them in implementing their solutions because they're not only passive victims, they are also agents of change and we have to support them in making this change. We need to make sure that finance is reaching refugee-led organizations. So organizations that are targeting the issues because they are placed in these contexts and they have the knowledge to know best how to implement solutions. How this could look like is, for example, investing in climate resilient shelter. In a lot of refugee settlements, shelter is just really inadequate to deal with climate-related hazards not only in Dada, but also in other settings like in Mozambique, where we're seeing recurring cyclones destroying infrastructure in camp settings. We have to make sure that they have better access to resilient basic services, so water, food. We need to make sure that they have access to livelihoods that are adapted to the climate crisis, because often their livelihoods are limited to agriculture, which is, dev uh, which is impacted heavily by climate change. So making sure that they have the means to, for example, invest in climate smart agriculture techniques on the ground, and we need to capacitate them to do so better. So we need more global solidarity, because in the end we are all humans. Climate change is impacting all of us, but it's not impacting us equally. So I really urge everybody to take action in their own lives. What you can do as an individual now is speak about the topic, raise awareness, and make sure that if we talk about climate change, it's not talking only about protecting the, the planet, but really protecting people's lives and their livelihoods and their futures. So I think what has to be done more is you need to raise awareness. For example, go and speak to, to your family, speak to other members of your community to make sure people are more aware, people are taking the right political decisions, go and vote. And at the same time, I mean also mitigate your own emissions to not contribute more to the climate crisis, but also making sure that wherever you have influence on financing decisions, political decisions, that we have more inclusion. So, for me personally, I'm really passionate about the topic. I don't think it receives enough attention globally. So working on these issues can be very depressing because the numbers are big, the scale is big. And what we're seeing is that it's only going to get worse over the next years. So I personally want to do everything I can to contribute, to raise awareness, to make people aware, but also to just make sure that people are heard themselves. So that's why I'm participating in the COP, to talk to refugees, to be here with refugees and elevate their voices, but also making sure that people understand that the science is clear. We just need to act upon it. <laughs>